morning. My name is Danelle Tills. I used to teach here at University High School, U.S. History Honors and AP. Right now I work for the district uh, in the Social Studies office, and we are taping me today with you um, for other Social Studies teachers in January to view. Okay, a lesson with you guys. So I very much appreciate you guys letting me come in and teach you today. Thank you to Mr. Frick for allowing me to invade his classroom, kind of take over a little bit, but he said, oh, do fourth period. Fourth period is awesome. And I said, okay. Now uh, you can come in fourth period. Um, I, this is honors? Yes, it is. Yes, good. What I have prepared for you is what Mr. Frick said. You have already pretty much is probably your place right now uh, in World War I. So what I have started off with, you grabbed a bunch of stuff from the front table when you walked in, and I know it was probably a lot of papers, um, but we want to make sure you can write on them. So what you should have in front of you is a note sheet that says World War I, the fighting ends. Okay. And a political, well actually there's two political cartoons. One uh, we will go over together and the other one I will you know, ask you to do um, yourself. A blank piece of printer paper and a political cartoon checklist. That's like a half sheet of paper that I will get to everything, I hope, in today's lesson. If not, Mr. Frick knows what this lesson is on and about. I don't have any idea. Oh, shush. <laughs> and he will be able to continue on Monday. All right, so first up, questions for discussion. What were the main, and I put main in all caps because that actually is something that will help us remember the underlying causes of World War One. So, what does the M stand for in Maine? Yes, ma'am. I love it. You remembered militarism. Okay. And what does that mean? How about you in the far corner? So it means like that you believe that you should have a strong military to like protect your country. Strong military, yes. I have the strong military. Very good. How about the A? How about the A, sir? Americanism? No. No, but you're going with, I think what you're thinking of will go with the N. Yes. Alliance? Alliances, yes. Excellent. Alliances, which is something that's going to come back in our lesson today. So let's focus on that one. I. I. What about you in the red sweatshirt? You know what the I is? Kind of what the Spanish American War was about as well? The foreign policy we used? <coughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yes, ma'am. Imperialism. Do you remember that one? Imperialism, the, the foreign policy we used in the Spanish American War, which is still in effect for us and other countries. Imperialism. In the end, the end, yes ma'am. Nationalism. Nationalism. Which I believe you, sir, were thinking of when you said American Americanism. Um, is because nationalism means what? Not Americanism, but what does it mean? Well, you know, like being true to your nation. Yes, you're proud, you're true, my country is the greatest. Yes. Rock on. All right. So these were the main underlying causes, and I always like to remember it that way. Um, just for trying to remember the main. You remember that one in Spanish American War? Have you ever taught that? Remember the main to help Spain? Yeah, when the U.S. Main broke up. So I always try to remember the main causes of World War One. So Europe gets in this first. And then we join. What is one of the reasons why we joined in? We wanted to stay away from it forever. The submarine warfare unrestricted. 
Yes, yes. That was really the true reason why we got involved is because Germany was sick in our ships. And we didn't like that. Now, there were other reasons that started building us up before that, and that would be? The Zimmerman note. The Zimmerman letter, which was? It was Germany telling Mexico that they would get <coughs> California back if they formed an alliance, and it was intercepted by the British. Right. They were going behind our backs, and they're like, hey, Mexico, let's, let's become friends, and you deal with the U.S. over there, and I'll give you back your land. And what? Wait a minute. That's all right. All right, so what's another reason? How about you and the white sweater? We got the Zimmerman letter. You remember a boat? Uh, it does, yeah. it does. You're so on it. <coughs> it does have a weird name. You're absolutely right. Yes, ma'am. The Lusitania. The sinking of the Lusitania would be another one. Why would we be mad about a British liner that got sunk? Who cares, right? Who cares? It's a British liner. Why would we be upset with that? There's carrying supplies. Okay, and? You're right, and? It had Americans on it. It had Americans on it. You kill Americans, we get mad. Okay. And so we got mad about that. And the last real true piece um, that started building up our, our anxiety here against the whole war was the DeLone letter. You guys heard of that? No, you're shaking your head no. Uh, Mr. Frank, have they never heard of that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they, they, what is it? No. Is that, no, go ahead. The DeLone letter is the Spanish ambassador to Spain wrote a letter, not to Spain. What am I thinking Spanish? I'm back at Spanish American War. So sorry. <laughs> the German ambassador wrote that McKinley in America is weak, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about them. They're not going to get in here because they're too, they're too weak. So we're like, oh, we are? OK. So we've got militarism, alliances, imperialism, nationalism, all the isms, pretty much, as the underlying foundation. And then. We have the catalyst that, that sparks it all in Europe, which is the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. It goes on. We want to stay out of it, but we can't stay out of it. Germany keeps sinking our ships. All right. So the war is going on for a few years before we get in. What does our entrance into the war do to the whole war itself? I mean, how does, it, how does our entrance... Does it help the Allies? Does it do anything at all with the Central Powers? How, how does our getting involved do anything? Sir? Uh, it joins the Allies and goes against the Central Powers. It does. And the Central Powers have been fighting longer, have they not? Than we have. So we you've got a fresh batch of troops, high morale, and they're like sitting there going, war. I'm in the trenches and it sucks, right? So finally, Germany will surrender. In fact, its navy goes on a mutiny. It says no more. I don't, we don't want to have any part of this war. Public support goes away. People say, we're done. Okay. And so I don't know. Or, Oh, I don't have clear. Okay. What do you mean? Yeah, just that. Um, so we're going to talk about what happens when the war ends. Okay. What's going to happen afterwards? Yes. Um, Please. Before you start on this, will you tell me what did you say about the letter? The DeLone letter. Yeah. Okay. Good question. DeLone letter. That's how you spell his name. That was the minister. Um, that the ambassador that sent the letter to just, just saying that we were weak, don't need to worry about us, we're not going to be a problem. Thank you. You're welcome. 
All right, moving on, Mr. Frick, we're going to go to the Daily Times Enterprise. Picture of the new, a newspaper, the day of. Whole country celebrating. Terms of armistice announced today. What does armistice mean? It's what? So laying down your arms? Is that what you said? No. Oh, well, well that's what I heard. <laughs> Yeah, like, 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 like peace, like, like, like we're done, yeah. right? We're done. We're as, as I said, laying down in our arms. And you know what date that occurred? Would be November 11th, 1918. Does that date sound familiar to you? November 11th. It's Veterans Day. Good job. Okay. It's also known as Armistice Day. Um, it's Armistice Day because of this. Of this event. So if you look down here, it says, Terms of Armistice strips Germany of all conquered territory and restoration of devastated lands. Naval units surrender and army demobilizes. So what's happening in Germany? They're giving, what are they giving up? How about you in the plan? <coughs> well, not their freedom, but what does like the country of Germany get have to give up? Their, yes ma'am? Their land. Their land. So you see they have to give up their territory that they had conquered back. They also have to get rid of a lot of their weapons and armaments and ships and there's more that's going to come after Germany. We can see a foreshadowing of what's to come. All right, Mr. Frick. This is where the peace conference will be held. It's a mighty fine building, don't you think? Okay. This is Versailles. Hence why it's called the Treaty of Versailles. Next, please. Thank you. We will have the Big Four attack. And I believe on your notes, this is where the blanks begin. I will go over it once you're finished. It's very hard to listen and read and write at the same time. represent the big four? According to this, what countries represent the big four? Yes. Italy. Italy. France. France. Great Britain. Great Britain. And the U.S. Yeah. Who's not in this picture? Germany. Germany was not allowed inside during the treaty negotiations. Why? I mean, the war was with Germany, right? Why wouldn't they be involved? They don't, exactly right. They don't want them to have a, a say in any of it. Because who do we blame for the entire thing? There you go. In fact, in this Treaty of Versailles is going to be what's known as the War Guilt Clause saying that Germany has to take full responsibility for the whole thing. That's asking quite a bit. 
Now, President Wilson comes in with his 14 points plan. But the other nations are sitting there going, huh, I want money and I want revenge. Why do you think they want money and revenge? Why don't they want to work out details of peace? I mean, why does Britain want money and France want revenge? Basically, both of them want the same thing. <coughs> what happened to them? What happened to them? Okay. Thank you. They both were in the war longer, so therefore had a lot more damage and a lot more loss of life. So, yeah. They're going to go after money and revenge. Okay. Italy just wants the land that was taken back from them. All right, Mr. Kirk. Now, the next section, there's no blanks there. I just wanted you to take a look at some of the things that were included in Woodrow Wilson's 14 points plan. This, these are some things that he said, okay, this is what kind of caused the war, so why don't we look at... Know, maybe working on ways to not let this happen again. Let's have the freedom upon the seas. You know, because of all that unrestricted submarine warfare, and this is my area, I'm going to block, because, you know, Britain is still blockading Germany's ports at this point. So, let's have freedom upon the seas. Open and equal trade between all countries, and goodness gracious, let's reduce the amount of weapons that we have. Because, you know, this militarism thing certainly got that number up. But one of his major points would be the 14th point, and that would be a League of Nations. He comes in, he says, let's make a, a body, an international body here, made up of all the countries that can, if this stuff ever starts to happen again, we can work together diplomatically before this thing goes out of whack again. They actually put that in there. They put the League of Nations in there. have some blanks here in this part of your your notes new boundaries were made, the League of Nations was formed, and Germany was blamed. Germany has to pay 33, approximately, 33 billion dollars in reparations. What's a reparation? Okay. To be paid? An amendment for what you for wrong you're An amendment? Like, not, no, like a, um, like making amends for what you've done wrong. Okay, so war, war payments for, yes, for doing for doing wrong, good. So they're forced to give up territory, they have to reduce their military, and they have to pay $33 billion. Do you think they have $33 billion? After just fighting that war and losing? No. This is gonna lead Germany into one of the worst depressions they have ever seen. This is where a loaf of bread will cost four million marks. A sign of beer will cost 12 million marks. This is where they are literally burning money. 
and using it as wallpaper. Because it is worthless after World War I. So can you see how this is starting to foreshadow the rise of a different voice that will give them somewhat of a hope? But it turns paintings. All right, Mr. Frank, please. So Wilson comes back. He's happy with this treaty. He's like, yes, my League of Nations is in there. He brings it back, and the Senate, whose job it is to ratify this treaty, rejects it. Oh, how embarrassing. How embarrassing. Why will, why will the Senate not ratify it? What's in it that they don't like? What's in it that Wilson really wanted and got? What is it? In yellow? Um, they wanted to stay out of their problems. They wanted to stay out of Europe's future problems. And what would the League do? Keep the problems at bay. If we joined... What, were this, what was the Senate scared of happening? Getting involved again. You're getting involved again. Yes, excellent, thank you. Getting involved again. That was one of the main causes, wasn't it, that we went over? Alliances. That's one of the reasons why people kept getting involved in this war. We're forming, in their eyes, a huge alliance. So are we going to be pulled into another future conflict. <coughs> so just as Wilson is about to go off and get public support for his League of Nations and Treaty of Versailles, he starts going on a train tour to raise public support. So if you get public support, you know Congress will pay attention. Then he has a heart attack. Or a stroke. One of the two. And he's done. He can't do it anymore. So the Senate has the power to reject it, and they do. And other countries, other than the U.S., are now in the League of Nations. All right, we are, since they're one of the ones that were coming up with it. So that's the reason. That's what you got to think. When, when, what was the reason why the United States did not join the League of Nations? Or why did the, Congress, did the Senate not ratify the Treaty of Versailles? It's because we didn't want to get pulled in into another war. But we did. All right, next please. All right, one of your cartoons, one of your sheets, is this political cartoon that you picked up. The title says, Interrupting the Ceremony. And I put up there what the text in the bubble says. But before we even look at all of that, the first question just says, what symbols or objects do you see? Not, don't tell me what's going on yet. Just, what do you see? Ma'am. I see like the dude that's like jumping into like, okay. the window. Okay. He's holding the. Oh, um, don't don't say anything more. <laughs> Man jumping into window. Now, yes. Wedding. Wedding. Okay. We see a wedding, sir. Uh, the lady's dress. The lady's dress, okay. And are there any other peoples or symbols being used here, ma'am? Can you see one? Yeah. The book. The book, okay. The book.
And this is supposed to represent who? A minister? Preacher? Okay. Okay. There's an audience. Who else is standing in the wedding party? Is that Uncle Sam? That's Uncle Sam. <coughs> Okay, so when every time you look at a political cartoon, sometimes you just gotta look at what objects or symbols do you see before you start putting it all together. So the title, Interrupting the Ceremony, is talking about whom? Who is interrupting the ceremony? The, oh, oh, hold on, what? The Senate. Does it, it says that, thankfully we can see it. <laughs> it says the US Senate. The U.S. Senate is interrupting the ceremony holding what? The constitutional rights. The constitutional rights. Which, what does the U.S. Senate have, what rights do they have to stop the ceremony? I said it earlier. What? What do they have the power to do? I'm sorry? Not sign off on the treaty. Right. They have the power to not allow the treaty to be ratified. So he's interrupting the ceremony. <coughs> the ceremony is a wedding between who? Oh, foreign, foreign entanglements and Uncle Sam, who represents USA or government or people. Okay. And this one is USA. <coughs> the minister is holding the book that says League of Nations. So they're coming together under the League of Nations and here comes the Senate saying, stop. Stop. So with knowing everything now, do you think this artist is for or against the ratification of the Treaty of Versailles and what elements in this political cartoon make you come to that conclusion? Yes, ma'am. I think he's against it because um, if he was for it, it wouldn't show in the Senate jumping through a window to try and stop it. Okay, so you're saying that action itself is a big action yeah. to put in the cartoon. Yeah. So you're saying he's against this ratification. Okay. Yeah. I think he's against it because it uses the word interrupted rather than stop. Okay. So, what's the difference though between using those two words in your head? Okay, so you're abruptly saying no. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like he's like interjecting into like interrupting what they were Right. Okay. I like it. You guys are using evidence from this cartoon to make your conclusions, to draw your conclusions. And that's what we need you to do. So on the back of that political part two, and Mr. Brick, if you will. Yep. Okay. Is now your turn. So on the bottom there's space uh, on the political part two for you to go ahead and answer just like we did, what symbols and objects do you see first off? Just make a bullet list, that's fine. What does the merchant, WW, mean when he says, you'll have to take these with it? And what is the sugar supposed to represent? And how does this cartoon illustrate feelings towards the League of Nations in 1919? Which is where it's from. So just take them. Yes. Well, I put the, the definition of covenant up there because it says league covenants. And I wasn't sure if you were um, needed the definition. So what symbols or objects did you see? You, sir. The public. Okay, so the top hat. Public. Okay. 
And bam. I have a question. Yes, please. Does the WWM widget say for World War? No. It's a it's a it's a man. Well, yeah. But WW that's initials oh, for Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Okay, what else do we see? Sir? He's like trying to sell goods. He's trying to sell the package. So we see goods, yeah. okay? We see goods. And we see a, a counter. Barrels, boxes, packages. Those are all things that we see. So putting that all together plus the text, which says lead covenants or a contractor agreement. So lead terms has to all be bought at the same time you just want to buy this one little thing. Right? Is that what you concluded? Which was the peace treaty. So when it says, what does the merchant, Woodrow Wilson, mean when he says, you'll have to take these with it. You'll have to take these with it. With it, ma'am. Like, for the peace treaty, just for that one small thing, you have to, like, take the burden of, like, signing agreements and all of these rules you have to follow just to have a peace treaty. Okay. So you have to take all of it. Every single piece of this treaty, even though you just want to purchase this one section, this one bit, sorry, it's all or nothing. So the sugar was supposed to be the peace treaty. Everything else goes with it. So how does this cartoon illustrate feelings towards the League of Nations in 1919? Ma'am. It's basically saying that the League of Nations, like, from the view of the Americans and like the Senate, that it was more of a problem than a solution. Good, good answer. Okay, so because this shows public, it's supposed to be representing the public, right? And as you just said, it's more of a problem to get all of this than just this, what I what we need. Okay? And even if you notice there's some like smelly cheese over here that goes with it. So it kind of gives off that negative connotation, that, that context. But you noticed all the symbols that were in here. You noticed what those symbols were trying to tell you. And even the little things from this cartoon and the last one, you can see were all used to make a point. Okay? Or to try to sell the reader, if you will, on a belief. All right, next one. So now it's your turn. Oh, I know. The blank piece of paper, that's what this is for, and the checklist to help you. <coughs> the checklist is there for you as your guide to pretty much say, do you have this stuff in the political cartoon and Mr. Frank's check column uh, and comment section is also listed when he uh, raise it. So cartoon clearly conveys an understanding of the issue, meaning you're supposed to make one <laughs> either for or against the ratification of the treaty or the League of Nations, putting what we've learned about why we did not join the League of Nations, you know, trying to make us see that you understand why we rejected it. But you could be for it. Completely up to you. Okay. So, do you completely show us that you understand the issue, which is today's lesson? Excellent use of appropriate appropriate symbolism. You've seen a lot of it here. The wedding. The Senate holding constitutional rights. Peace treaty as sugar, but then you have to get all this other stuff, and part of that was stinky cheese. Okay. 
to try to convey your opinion on the topic. Title, just have a title that says it's clear, clever, and relevant. Key issue and your position are clearly identifiable. And that it's just, it's just neat and clean. I don't think we care if it's colored or not. As long as, if, if you want it to be, that's completely up to you. Um, and if you have any captions or titles or anything like that to help us figure out what's going on, at least we can read those. So any questions on the checklist and what's being asked of you? No? All right, well, I'll be around to see if you do. And then keep this because you're going to staple it to the back of your, of your cartoon. Oops, I didn't erase this. That's over. Bye. Do you have the next two weeks to do anything about the Unit 6 test from yesterday? All right, so please make sure you get that done. You've got to learn smart do Monday, and your last one do Friday, 4th and 8th. And you'll have two quizzes next week for this unit. So, just so you know, as far as grades go, figure your four more, four, well, a couple more four moves, about maybe five more four moves. And then you got the Unit 7 test and the final. Okay, we're getting there. Questions? No. Um, so I know how the whole ever five thing is the graduation requirement basically right. for the course is learn smart along with that too? No. Okay. So because if you can't go back and do it once yeah. it's done, it's done, right? So you can't go back because it's for credit and do it. Like, okay. it, it. It doesn't let you. It's not even me. It's, it doesn't let you. So okay. you track it. So. Yep. Good. In and out. All right. Ready to dance? Let's not do that. Let's not dance. It's weird. <laughs> All right. Deep breath. Yeah. All right. So, hey, I'm going to spend the next few days really pushing hard for you guys to get through this unit fast. So, um, you're going to do the same, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no matter how I feel, how exhausted I am, I'll be here every day. So, I expect the same out of you. Um, that way we can get through this. Yeah, are you sad? It's the last unit. I'm, I'm going to cry. I'm about to cry. <laughs> Alright, unit seven. Booyah. We're going to talk about taxes. We're going to talk about this weird thing called fiscal policy, whatever that is, and uh, in monetary policy. Um, there's some things in this unit that should be like a review from Everfi, like in taxes. We talked about some stuff about taxes in there, right? So that should be part of it should be kind of like a review. I had someone earlier go, well, oh, I remember this from Ever Pi, and it's like, teacher win, right? Um, fiscal policy, whatever that is, um, that'll be new. And then monetary policy, some of it's new. The beginning part of it, though, should be a review, because we're going to start out talking about the Federal Reserve, which was from Module 2 of Ever Pi, right? So that should be a review as well. Um, all right, let's just get right to it. Let's start out with the uh, first chapter. Right, taxation. Yeah. Now, I, even though I know I'm trying to plow through this unit, um, please don't let that be a reason, because you guys are really good at that. Uh, I, don't let it be a reason for you guys to like, not ask a question or not want to have some conversation about what's going on, So, because that's as important as all this other stuff. So keep doing that. Um, but, you know, we just, other than that, other than that, we're just, you know, all right, so taxation. Other than that thing that people get mad about paying, right? What is taxation all about, right? So we want to look into that. Um, government revenue and spending. It, it's not just about us having to give the government this money, but the government, need, from their perspective, right, they need an income. And the biggest form of income is going to come from taxes. Um, and they need an income because, like, well, why do we need an income? We just spend, right? So they need to spend too, right? Like, our, remember our C plus I plus G plus an X, right? That G part? Well, government spending. They need to spend. Where do they get that money from? For the most part, we're going to get it from taxes, right? So that's, that's where we're going to take this in. Um, all right, so let's just get going. By definition, what well, is a tax? Mandatory payment to some level of government. Right, we're going to pay taxes at different levels of government. Um, from up on top, your federal government taxes, 
Um, and uh, so, Kimmy just got a job, right? So she'll. Now you make more than I did. Um, the, so who else has a job? We get to like a, like a legal job. That's it. Just her. I applied to McDonald's. And no one raised their hand the last time I asked this. Yeah, I applied to McDonald's. She's not here. So Man. Well, that's it. I can't teach the lesson now because I've nothing to. None of you. I don't want to use job. an example. You used to have a job. Yeah, when it was 14. No, it was in February. And January, February, January, February, March. They fired you that good thing? No, I quit. I mean, I worked, I did temp construction work this summer, but. Or last summer. Did you get? Did you get like a legit paycheck? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm going for. And that's, what, that's what I'm trying to go. <laughs> oh, no, I ever received a legit paycheck. All right. Um, so in that paycheck, right? There's taxes taken out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of that it is sucks. going to, or it's going to the federal government, right? So those are your federal, um, your sort of that's up here, national taxes that you're paying. Uh, in some states, like when I started working back in New York, when I was in high school. We have a state tax as well. So you get that paycheck, not only is it that stuff taken out, but then you got the other stuff taken out and it'll, uh, to you know to New York State. Um, I guess the, I mean, it would be less if they didn't take it out to begin with. But when tax time comes early in the year, uh, when that happens, you do get, if you get a tax refund, because not everyone does, right? Um, you get a tax refund from the federal government and then you get one from the state government. So um, that could be. As far as taxes go, if you do have to pay it, you, there is a possibility to get a refund there too. So that um, helps in that sense a bit. So, but we got these different levels, right? So we're paying um, local taxes, like for example, to the county or to the city, like sales tax that's dictated by the county, right? So that's a, that's a tax. Uh, local taxes, which could be city or county, depending on where you're living and what's going on. Um, if you own property, right, or home, you're paying property taxes. Uh, and things of that nature. So all these different taxes are going to go to some different level of kind of a, of the pyramid, right? And again, as we already said, what is this really being used for? It's revenue. It's the government's part of the government's income. Right? The government's going to pull in money from taxes, of course, and then they're also going to pull in income from non-tax sources, as we call them. Okay. Um, so let's say the government had, is planning on spending a certain amount of money. And then they go, oh snap, we didn't pull in enough in taxes, right, to basically cover that. They have a gap. They have to fill the gap somehow, right? So how are they going to do that? What do you think? Increase taxes. That would be that would be a future like right now. In the future, they could use that to um, maybe have a smaller gap in the future or not have a gap in the future. But like right now, we're like, oh snap, we need some more. What can we do? Programs like education or okay, they cut. That's also gonna be a process. Print more money. What's an easier? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Someone didn't listen. To Oh, they borrow it. <laughs> yeah, they borrow it. Right? They can borrow it. Um, they can borrow it. And where's, where's the number one place? I already know what someone's going to say. What's the number one place government borrows money from? Uh, I knew it. I knew it was coming. I knew it. Um, I knew it. Um, the, the number one place government borrows money from is the American people. Right? You did it. No, you did it. You changed it. Oh, people. People. Because China was bigger than our people. Um, so, about roughly, I'm giving you a rough estimate here, right? About roughly about two thirds of what the government owes is back to some form, fashion of the United States. Uh, so, um, fun facts. We're going to talk more about as far as government borrowing and uh, more specifically like debt and stuff later on. Um, that'll be next week. But um, but yeah, that's another way. That's another way they can pull in money, right? Um, 
And then there's other programs like the lottery, for example. Uh, obviously, lottery is that's where it's, it's gambling. It's legal gambling, so it runs through those avenues. So there's other ways other than taxes that um, they can bring in that revenue, right? All right. This brings us to the tax equity debate. All right now, when it comes to taxes, there's always a lot of discussion, right? There's always a lot of debate. There's always going to be a lot of debate. It's, it's one of those things where you got different points of view, and people are always going to see it differently, and they're going to debate about it. And whenever like the elections coming up, it's always going to be one of those things that you know, um, it's just not, there's not going to be a consensus on it. Um, so there's a debate, and the debate can consist of what kind of taxes, you know, kind of some simplifying here. What kind of tax should we have? Who should pay taxes? Who shouldn't pay taxes? How much taxes should those people pay? Right? Kind of every avenue, every angle of that conversation um, is uh, is debated. So we are going to look at briefly um, the tax equity debate, which focuses on kind of who should pay and why, or who should pay how much and why, right, um, that big conversation. So in order to understand the debate, though, we should probably know what we're talking about when we, when we talk about the word equity. Right, so tax equity is the idea that the tax system should be fair, right? So if I made that statement, the tax system should be fair, who agrees with that statement? Right, let me if you agree with that statement, okay? Well, a lot of hands. Okay, tax system should be fair. What does that mean? Jacob, what do you think? What does that mean? Like, everyone pays the exact same percentage. Okay, everyone pays the exact same percentage. Luke, what does that mean? Uh, to me, it means that depending on your income, it should be a larger percentage. Right, so teachers more. shouldn't pay any tax. Basically. <laughs> 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 uh, who else had their hand up? They want to know. Anyone? So we've got everybody should pay the same amount. Everybody should pay the same amount. You say same amount? Same percentage. Same percentage, okay, because it's, 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 it's different, right? Uh, and then Luke is saying that um, teachers shouldn't pay taxes. That's what I got out of that. Uh, Luke's saying that uh, pay income based, right? Yeah, so it's more so like pay more? Proportional, basically, like more okay. money you make. More you should pay taxes. Anyone else? Did anybody say that the people with less should pay more? A bigger percentage, and that, that we'll get, we'll see that, but we'll see that probably Monday. But that's a thing. Yeah, all right, it is. It totally is. Um, it has worked as well as you can imagine it's worked. But no, it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, all right, so we kind of have the two main, probably the two main arguments, like right there, right between you guys, Cody. I would duck if I were you. Sorry, they might get mad at each other. Um, so. What my point in asking that question is, does everybody have the same idea of what fair is? No. So, and, that, and hence the debate, right? Because, hey, the taxes should be fair. And everyone's like, yeah, boy. And then, that was weird. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. And then, and then everyone's like, cool, yeah, fair. And it's like, yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's B-O-I. Yeah. Uh, by the way, multiple eyes. Wait. She's looking to laugh again, and I'm done. Please do it. Now is the time. You're getting caught. So. And it's going to be over. So the other thing I want to the other thing I want to uh, pick your brains about is what's the difference between e equality and equity, right? Because again, to help understand what that term equity means, who knows? Does anyone know what the difference between equality and equity is? There are two different things. They have driving. Yeah, go for it. What was that? Equality is when everyone's treated fair. Equity is what is fair for the people. Does that make sense? Equality is... So you use, people you use fair in both of them, so I'm not really sure where you're going with it. So like, one is more towards people as people, and the other is towards basically everything else. Kind of like civic, everything else. Still not sure if I'm going to get it. Oh, they have E's in them. <laughs> I was like, can I give up? They both, have, they both start with E. Okay. Think about it and see if, uh, see if we can, we can, we'll come back to you again. All right? All right, Troy, you. Equality is like when 
you first said to him, did you say price or percentage? And you made sure that he said percentage. Price, uh, equality would be if he said price, everybody has to pay the exact same thing. And then equity is more like what we was talking about, so where it's more the people who have more to pay more because that balances the out as a fair balance. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. I'll read it. Let me, John, throw in and then I'll kind of jump back to you. Um, equality would be more like social equality, like the social fairness, and then equity would be like uh, physical fairness. Okay, so you're taking it, you're, you're saying that they're two different, they hit two different aspects of even like just the spectrum. Yeah. Really like, okay. I'm going to lean, I'm going to go back to Troy, and um, Troy was pretty, Troy was kind of, he was there, right? Um, so equality would be like Jacob saying the difference between uh, price and percentage, right? If everyone paid the same price, that would mean uh, uh, equality would mean everybody gets the exact same thing, right? Like no matter what, everybody's getting the exact same thing. Um, equity would rather be uh, though you're receiving what is needed to achieve an equal playing field. Does that make sense? There, there's a, an image, as I've seen it contact online, maybe some of you have seen it. It's like these three people, I'm going to call them kids. Oh, one foxes? Yes, and they're like at a fence. <laughs> and then the image is split in two. And on one side of it, it says equality. And there, there's a tall kid, a medium kid, and then Troy. Um, <laughs> tall kid, a medium kid, and then the short kid, right? And they can't see over the fence. So they all get one box, right? They all get equal assistance. The tall kid can now see over the fence, the other kids are just like, it's dark, right? And then the other, the other image says equality, and what we see is they each get a different number of boxes in order for them to all finally get their heads, or at least their eyes, above the fence, right? So is that good, I think that's a good visual, a good example of, uh, which I should add to my stuff, actually. Um, of the difference between the two, right? I think it's, it's it, no, understanding what the term equity means is helpful in kind of when we look at the two sides of the, of the debate, right? So, our two basic approaches in this debate are as follows. The first one is, which you're already covered, or this one is covered, we're just now learning, hey, what do we call them? The ability to pay principle, which is what it sounds like. Right? This is what Luke was saying. Like, hey, you got more money, so maybe you should pay more taxes, right? That's that's that point of view. Okay. Higher income, higher taxes. Why? Because the the philosophy behind it is if you have a higher income, if you have more money, you have again the ability to pay more. Or um, if Luke, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that some with that philosophy almost feel like, yes, uh, almost feel like they're um, like, hey, there's a social responsibility, or hey, those with more money have a social responsibility yeah, in a way to give back. Okay, agree, disagree, different debate, right? But just behind the, the thought behind this is like, hey, you got you got more, um, so you have the ability to get more in taxes, right? Um, pretty straightforward. The other one is the benefits received principle, which is again kind of what it sounds like. Um, they, they were talking about you before. So, benefits received principle, um, which is says like, hey. If I'm not, if I don't use this, then I'm not getting anything out of it, basically, right? No benefit received. Then, like, why should I have to pay taxes towards it, right? So I don't drive. Why should I have to? Sorry, that's me. Think. Why should I have to pay to, uh, contribute tax money towards you know fixing the roads and stuff when I don't I don't drive on it, right? Um, like, hey, we're going to run public school, right? There is an argument out there um, that you may have heard already, and I've heard it a bunch of times. Is hey, I don't, I don't have kids, or my kids are grown up, or 
I don't send my kid to a public school, why should I, you know, pay taxes towards public schools? Because I, I you know, say I'm personally not using, or nor is my family using those facilities, right? So that would be based off the benefits received principle. I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm not using it. So I shouldn't have to, right? Contribute that way. Um, Thoughts? Yeah. Do we use the benefits received? Ice cream. What? Do we use the benefits received? Good. Do we use benefits? Can you think of anything? I'll sit. Oh, wait. Good job, Kim. Oh, what you did. You made it. Now everyone has to stop and think. Oh, man. Uh, what are you doing? You were getting by so well. I know. She's like, I shouldn't have showed up. Um, no. Can you think of anything? We do. The answer is yes. But what? Um, Maybe like property tax, like if, if you own a certain amount of land, isn't there like a tax you have to pay on it? Yeah. Like the well, if you own you, property, you yeah. have to pay. So you're benefiting from having more land, so you should pay more based on how much land you have. Is that? I've heard that of, like, it like before. That would I be, know. I see what you're saying. That would be, um, I think that would go more towards ability to pay, because bigger land, greater, you know, greater value. Higher, so it's not it's not income based, but if we kind of took that and manipulated a little bit and called it acreage based, right? Um, okay. and, but that's also has to do with where you live, yeah. values where you live. So I mean, that's really you can live somewhere and have a smaller piece of land and pay more in taxes than someone that's got because it's a nicer area. So it it depends. Yeah. There's a lot of variables in that one. I get so. Good thinking though. Uh, well, hold on. Uh, we'll, uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah, that's end up there. Okay, take it. Okay. There's one for if you buy a car to pay taxes on it. Well, it's more. Okay, you're thinking. We're getting there. Um, sales tax, really. So that would be. You're not paying a tax that others would then benefit from. You see what I'm saying? See where we're going with the thought? So you buy a car, so yeah, you're paying taxes on the car. But it's not like you're buying, it's not like you're paying the tax for like other people. Ooh, that could be a good one. What well, we do pay for public transportation, but public transportation is also publicly funded, right? So there's tax dollars going in there, right? See, now we're, ooh, now it's like we're hot, like little thing. There's one, it's like a money one that I'm just like waiting, and that's close. That's, yeah, excuse me. Social Security or Medicare? Um, because people have, or I'm thinking AARP. <laughs> well, we, at, some, at some point, at some point, you know, we all pay, well, the work and paying in Social Security, but eventually you'll get that. Same thing, Medicare. Yeah. Eventually you'll, you'll get that. But so you get you're thinking the right thing. All right, you want me to just draw? Okay, last job we got. Ah, here, hug. Toll roads, right? Oh. Are you paying? Oh, that's that's a. It's essentially a, a tax, right? You pay a toll. Are the I four folks paying that? Just the just the four seventeen people, right? Or, and you know whatever else. It is usually. But yeah, that's that's it. Are the the new lanes on I four, right? They're expanding the new mid lanes. Did you know they're going to have tolls on them? It's weird. It, it's an interstate, which is a free highway, but these new like. Ex Super lanes. Um, I don't know what they're officially called, but they're going to have they're going to have toll. So it's like, hmm, what do I want to do in the morning? Do I want to get stuck in regular I four traffic, or could I take super middle lane, say, whatever, pay the toll, and get stuck in that zip time. there a little bit, right? And everyone, <laughs> everyone's going to go, forget it, I'll pay the toll, and we're going to go. <laughs> but <laughs> so, <laughs> you can argue the same thing for four seventeen, but four seventeen is generally still much better, right? What? What's up, Mike? No. Just funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> it was a quiet. So good. I like. I like that you guys are saying. We kind of built up to it. I like that. And then John was like, so good stuff. Kim's gonna bring us all an ice cream when she starts working. I just. I did. I thought I'd tell you now. She told me I'm not allowed to give free ice cream. I like better. We'll said. pay for it. <laughs> like a penny. I'm just like, okay, do it. That was the first thing she said. Tax, wow. <laughs> Clearly, this has been a. It's been a long day.
issue. Tom an issue. Oh, she said she had to fire people for that. Oh, man. Is that why you got to No. I think so. She saw her polo. She's in our society. She'll never steal ice cream. Um, all right. So tax incidents. So now we have this deal with tax incidents, right? Which is who is actually paying? Who's carrying the burden of the actual burden of paying a tax? Because, um, for example, an, an entity that's getting taxed isn't necessarily kind of put paying for that out of their pocket. Again, using the example on the screen, hotels have to pay what's called an occupancy tax, which is what it sounds like. I like when things are what they sound like. Um, people occupy those rooms, right? <laughs> Mind blow, right? Um, so, they, uh, they ha anyway, there has to be a tax. There's a tax that goes along with that, right? So, anywho, what do you think the hotels are doing? You think they're going, oh darn, right here? Oh, just, what do you think they're doing? Who do you, th who do you think they're. Who's really paying that tax? Yeah, the. Yeah. the the customers, right? Um, the, the stayers, is that the official term? <laughs> Those who uh, sleep in the, uh, the hotels? Um, the stayers, I like that. The sleepers. Occupiers. <laughs> Occupiers, yeah. The, uh, yeah, so it, your room, right? When you pay for a room, there's extra thrown in there, okay? You're paying for that. Um, in the rental, basically. So we call it rent, you rent a room, right? So, yeah, borrow it. I don't know. Renters. <laughs> Renter, that now it sounds like they live there. Right. Hey, what day is that? April, April. 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 April, yeah. yeah. April 15th. Um, does anyone know why that's tax day? Like, why isn't it like July, I was just 20, Fourth. <laughs> I don't know where July 24th came. Yeah, yeah you, all you, buddy. Bank holiday? What is it? Oh, bank holiday. No, that's not why. Yeah. Oh, no. April Fool's. April Fool's. No, it's, it's not April Fool's. Somebody, <laughs> somebody earlier said, because four, April's the fourth month, but four plus one equals five. That's what they went with. Oh, I was okay. like, okay, I'll give it to you. You're a genius. Was, <laughs> it was the day taxes were invented. It was the day taxes were invented. That's a pretty good one, but not the Boston Massacre. <laughs> what? I can see how that U.S. history teacher. Oh, no. What did you do to her? Let's bring up snacks for everyone. Then put it away. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. You got me. I can't follow. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. We're finishing class early. After that. No, we're not. So, well, all right. No one knows because by that time of the year, it's just, that, that marks the one third point. Of the year. And generally by them, um, generally by them, by then, uh, taxes they've collected the taxes they need. So that's. That's why it's tax day. Uh, and a lot of us get money back, right? On now, by the way, don't wait till then to do your taxes. Do them like early. Do them, you think, do them February, right? Or March. Do them. Don't wait. Don't, don't, wait. don't, don't wait. Don't let them pop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't do your taxes like you do your schoolwork. <laughs> <Yeah, dude. laughs> what is it do? It's gonna close down. <laughs> I need to hurry up. Don't don't send a remind text. To your the IRS. <laughs> it goes, so my internet's not working. And I, I can I redo this? Is it formative or summative? What do we got? I know the camera's there, but I can't stop. I can't stop. I'm trying hard not to. I need to. Sorry, folks at home watching, I need to compose myself. Oh, we're editing? We got a blooper reel. This whole time, I didn't know. We got to have a blooper reel. We have a blooper reel? No, okay. Since we're editing, now we're not editing. No, they're the middle of Jeopardy. Cecil does his lap. It's. 
I guess I just stopped playing the game. <laughs> behind the podium. Like, I cried. <laughs> I literally cried, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that would be the first time I'd ever seen you in tears. <laughs> And then I couldn't stop, because then whenever I told myself to stop, I kept my laughing more. <laughs> I was like laughing at him, he just keeps yeah, laughing. Yeah, right. It's contagious. Cecil's trying so hard right now. You're <laughs> <laughs> being a big man. Go, go, go. Oh. Nah, okay. <laughs> right. Don't do it now, please. <laughs> <laughs> my head, go. Oh, it's like you're so cute. Alright, we have to learn stuff. Um, so, where were they? We're exactly where were they standing when we blew them up? I think they're better at editing than that. Doesn't have to be a little bit of that. So, anyway, I don't know what we said last, but don't do that. Tax day. Pay your taxes. Pay your taxes, okay? Alright, so, all taxes have two main parts, two basic elements. Every, every tax we pay and come across are going to have some these parts, right? This is, <coughs> this is just there. The first thing is everything's going to have what we call tax base, which I love this section because it's what it sounds like. It's what the tax is based off of. It's like they do it on purpose, right? <coughs> so, it's tax base. so if you're paying O income tax, what are they taxing? Your income. If you're paying sales tax, don't say they're taxing sales. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a story about that. But anyway, um, they're taxing whatever the good or service that was there was a sale of, right? So if I go and buy another PlayStation, then I gotta pay tax on that sale tax, right? So it's a tax base to um, property tax. When you pay property tax, what's being taxed? Property, okay? The property, right? <coughs> That's the tax base. By the way, you don't pay tax on your house. The house adds the, to the value of the property. But if you own like a lot with trees, you're still paying property tax, right? The house adds value um, to that property. So you're paying property tax. Is what it is. Okay. And then every tax has a tax rate, right? That is the percentage that either that we are paying. So, right, your personal income tax rate, how much of your income is it that you're paying in taxes? Uh, the sales tax rate, right, what is the percentage, right, of tax? So here in Volusia, it's six and a half, right? And seven, oh, it's seven. Excuse me. Six cents. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, go ahead. I suppose. Good? Good. Huh? All right. All right, so this, this, this stuff, this is biggie stuff. Um, tax structures. These three things that we're going to talk about here. Um, they're basically the three ways that the tax system can be set up. Right? Um, so when the tax debate happens, or you know, when, when elections come around and things like that, and taxes come up as they always do, and the type of tax system we have, or maybe the argument is what type should we have, or wherever that's going, right? Here it is. Like here here's the the main subject, right? Here here are the ways we can build a tax structure. Right? Um, so we're gonna go through these. But no matter what the tax structure is, there's three of them. Um, no matter what, as Uncle Sam says, you got to pay yo taxes, right? No matter what, you still got. There's no, there's no tax system that's called no tax, right? There's, there's none that goes, and this one says no one should pay any, all right? Um, so these all do involve paying taxes. All right, let's start at the top. First one is called a proportional tax. Are proportionating. Everyone is paying. This is uh, Jacob. This is where he was at earlier. <clears throat> Everyone's paying the same percent. Now, as we talked about with Jacob, it's about the percentage. Okay, it's not about the dollar amount. That that's important to distinguish, right? When we talk about <coughs> taxes, 
It's a, it's a percentage, not a dollar amount. Okay. Um, so, proportional tax. Everyone pays the same percent. Okay. Different dollar amount still, but same percent. Um, you could hear this referred to, actually you hear it referred to a lot, uh, as a flat tax. Why do everyone pay the same flat percent, right? <coughs> So, hypo hypothetically speaking, of course, if there was a quiz question about this, and two of the possible answers said proportional tax and flat tax, what's the answer? Proportional. He's the only one to know. Right? Proportional, right? Who's going to, who, hypothetically, who's going to still put flat? I think there's only someone goes, oh me, I'm going to do it. Uh, right? Hypothetically. So everyone pays the same. Now, this, this, is a, this can be a popular idea, right, the proportional tax. Um, it comes up, you know, like there's like an election going on, right, presidential election. It comes up, someone brings it up um, in a debate or in their, in their policy proposals, or, and, uh, and people start thinking, you know, comes back up. Well, hey, yeah, that, yeah, that's a good idea. But we never seen them kind of get past like, hey, that's a cool idea, right? So who thinks, um, who thinks this is a good idea? I'm just curious. Hands, okay. So even if you don't like the idea, who thinks it's at least worth involving in the conversation? Okay. I usually get that. I throw that second part in there because I usually get just a couple more, a couple more hands. Right? I go, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So even if you don't, you're not a fan of it, um, it's at least, right, we could agree that it's at least a good part to have in the conversation. But why does it never get beyond the conversation? Because although the percentage is equal, the impact is not. Right? Someone with a lower income, low, you know, lower income, giving up 10% of their lower income is Im still impacted Think of like on a needs basis or anything else like still impacted more so than I'm gonna be extreme here. Say someone that's got like, you know, half a million dollars and paying ten percent, right? Um, so you got someone that makes thirty thousand dollars paying ten percent, someone that makes half a million dollars paying ten percent. Yes, the other person is paying more in taxes than the other person even makes, but um, someone who's living tight and then loses ten percent is struggle a little bit more, right? So what happens is when the conversation comes up, that roadblock always rises, and we kind of get stuck there, right? Um, in that sense. So, or, that, or that's how, that's the perception, right? Um, but it's definitely good to have another part of that conversation, or right? you know, have this as a part of the conversation. Um, and I'm glad to see some of you guys are already thinking about these things that were already there. Maybe you just weren't quite sure that what it was called or how official it was. So what do we actually have though, right? So people like this, right? It it's, comes up as in the conversation. And, uh, you know, and I guess I'll be in opposition, I'll say, to what we currently have, which is a progressive tax system, right? Progressive tax system, yes, takes more based off the ability to pay takes uh, a greater percentage from those with higher income. Yes, sir? Um, isn't proportional more of like a conservative viewpoint and progressive more of like a liberal sort of idea? Like uh, <coughs> politically, yeah. proportional tax, um, it, it usually comes up more from that side of the spectrum, the proportional tax, um, like in you know, their debates. Yeah. Uh, like, like, for example, last year we had no returning for no incumbent president, right? So you had both sides vying for it. So you had you know a bunch of different people, you know, chatting at the debates and stuff, right? So that's why we're not. So yeah, you'll see normally on that on one stage is you'll you'll hear the idea of a flat tax come up. Um, which one? Oh, the, the Republican stage usually, and then on the other the other side they'll um, the, they'll stick to the uh, progressive progressive system. Um, yeah, you know, and they'll offer, you know, uh, in their view, you know, uh, tweaks or you know, changes, things like that. 
But as far as, <coughs> yeah. So, and, uh, and, I'm, and that's good. I'm glad that you're, you guys are recognizing that because uh, it's there. You know, it's only there. Um, and, uh, <coughs> and and they each have, yeah, each are going to have their own position. Um, so the progressive tax, uh, again, takes a larger based off the ability to pay. Most of our federal taxes are based off of this. So again, you got a paycheck, um, that those taxes come out of your check, that's based off that progressive system, right? Um, for example, something like sales tax, how, however, on the other hand, is not a progressive tax. It's actually going to be the third one we talk about, um, which, we'll, which we'll get there, okay? Um, this is, is a complicated system, right? It was, for good or for bad, it was created as a complicated system. Um, you can debate whether it's become more complicated or not over time. But either way, it's up. Like proportional, 10%, everybody, boom, got it, right? Uh, this is a bit more complex, okay? When we say that larger share of income as income increases, it's not a blanket statement. So for example, someone that's like has a million dollars isn't paying an overall greater percentage in tax, right? The best way I can show you this is to literally try to show you this, to try to take a complex situation and make a really bad drawing, right? To try to simplify um, a complex scenario. So let's give this a shot. Who wants me to draw that? Oh boy. Well, I gotta draw Jacob because of the hair, right? All right. So, what we're gonna have is, first of all, we're gonna have two, two little boxes. Not a little box. One box, two box. Right. All right. Who wants to be the rich person? Oh, I want to be. You ask so much. <laughs> My name is up first. That's right. I disagree. I don't know why I made your head so What do you mean? It's fine, but I'm trying to at the top. You're at the bottom. I see, but I think it is. I want to get his pearly waves right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know, but for some, some reason you have, Marley. You have eagle feathers coming inside your head. I think that's actually pretty good. It's like tucked behind his ears. Wait. Oh. I had to I had to make sure you could see that. It was tucked behind his ears. I run from the floor. I can't sit there so much. You have hot dogs right? <laughs> Alright, so that's a little better. That's pretty good. I'm going to take a picture of that. <laughs> Hey, that's good. Just do it. Oh, that's scary. Amazing. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Oh, my God. He's so good. 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 Right? It's like winning the lottery. Unless you're a teacher. Got all my money. Boom. What happens is our money, our income, gets split up into sections. Right? <coughs> so I'm going to take some of it and make that pile, and this pile, and that pile. Are you seeing me kind of visioning this? So I'm going to take our boxes. This is our income, by the way. Right? Um, Jacob, that looks really like you, <laughs> makes $40,000. That's Troy. Makes two million. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think I've so what, what, what happens here is our income is, by the way, this is not drawn to scale. I'm totally <laughs> making up numbers just to get the point across. Our income is split up into sections. So I'm just going to take this and split this income up into different sections. Okay? Different categories. So the way this works is. Each of those categories or each of those piles are going to be taxed at a different percentage. 
following. Okay? Which means all of my money is not taxed at, I'm making some up, 25%. Just one pile of my money is. Which means my other piles are going to be taxed either more or less. Right? So take a dollar bill and it's cut up into pieces. Right? So at the bottom, the first, the first part of your income is not taxed. Okay? I'm just going to pick very nice, clean numbers just to move along through the process. So don't go with my numbers, just go with my concept. So let's just, uh, up to $10,000, right? So that dotted line is $10,000 for both of them. From $0 to $10,000, okay? I'm going to say that's taxed at zero, that's a zero, not a pair. Um, that's taxed at 0%, no tax, okay? Then we're going to go up to $20,000, okay? So now this is $10,000 in one penny, all the way up to $20,000. Just this pile of money, that's absurd. <laughs> just, just that pile of money. So here's my zero pile. Now my, my other pile, just that pile is taxed at, what did I say, 5%. Make sense? Okay, boom, we're gonna put that to the side. Then we go to the next pile, up to $30,000. Just this section alone is taxed at 10%. You so see how each chunk is handled on its own. So what happens now though, sorry, you just lost $5,000, Jacob. Oh, okay. I don't want to do this way. So what happens now, Jacob's only got $5,000 left, right? Right here. Troy clearly keeps going. Because this is going to go up to, now I'm making this crazy jump, $100,000. Wait a second, he doesn't have that much. He's $95,000, or he's, sorry, that's actually 70. He's $65,000 short. That's okay. Because Jacob's 5,000 will be taxed at 15%. Only 5,000, because then he's done, he's broke. Troy, though, is gonna pay 15 on the whole section. So now, you see how now Troy is starting to pay more in taxes?